Welcome to all of you, God's beloved. I can say that all of us here this evening, uh, that we are all God's beloved. Because in some way, whether big or small, minor or earth-shattering, our hearts have been touched by Henry Nouwen. My name is Daniel Cho. I'm the chair of the board of directors of the Henry Nouwen Society. I'm the minister at Rosedale Presbyterian Church in Toronto, and I am so honored and pleased to be here with you this evening and to welcome you to this wonderful event. Thank you for taking the time to be here and to celebrate the legacy of our executive director of the Henry Nouwen Society, Karen Pascal, as she prepares to retire from this position. Her heart has been touched by Henry, and her work as the executive director has borne the wonderful and creative fruit of her encounter with him. And we are blessed by her work, her fruit. I just love the title of this evening, Called to be Fruitful. This was very important to Henry, and he was so passionate about Christians understanding this, the difference between success and fruitfulness. He would say with passion, God has not called you to be successful but fruitful. And that spoke so deeply to me. And that's still such a powerful message for us today. Uh, I was blessed to have known Henry in the mid-90s. I had left youth ministry and wanted to leave the church for good because of awful experiences. It was a time of brokenness in my life. And then I encountered Henry. He changed my life. He changed my understanding, transformed my thoughts of ministry, and became a, a spiritual mentor of mine. And I'm just truly blessed to have had this experience before his untimely passing. He brought the truth of God and God's heart right to the core of my being and identity. I did a lot of heavy lifting with experiences of vulnerability, accepting my handicaps, as well as realizing my belovedness as Henry taught it. And I've been dedicated to his message ever since. And one important person with whom I've had the privilege of crossing paths is Sister Sue Mosteller. We all know Sue. Uh, she knew Henry as well as anyone could. She was his best friend. She has been a tremendous blessing in my life as our paths have crossed quite frequently, and she brought me into this Henry Nowen world, this, this circle. Uh, congratulations also. Uh, Sister Sue, if you don't know, recently is a recent recipient of the Order of Canada. And so what a tremendous <laughs> honor. Uh, and this lovely place that we are in this evening, the Sisters of St. Joseph are the original residents of this wonderful place. Uh, and so your legacy is all over. The imprint is all over. Uh, last year in November, I was so honored to have Sue speak at Rosedale Church to mark the 25th anniversary of my ordination. Henry was supposed to speak at my ordination 25 years ago when I returned, when I honored my call to ministry. Uh, he was supposed to speak after he returned from the Netherlands, from his sabbatical, and as we all know, he never returned. Um, so Sue's presence this past November brought everything full circle for me, and I'm so grateful 
and honored for Sue's gifts in my life. And so thank you, Sue. And I will welcome her, and she will lead us in our opening prayer. Beloved Lord Jesus, you who came to us to show the compassionate love of your Father, help us, your people, to know this love with our hearts, minds, and souls. So often we feel lonely, unloved, and lost in the valley of tears. We desire to feel affection and tenderness, care and compassion, but we often suffer from inner darkness and emptiness. I pray tonight, come Lord Jesus, come. Enter deeply into our hearts and reveal your presence to us in our inmost beings. As long as you remain absent from this intimate core of our existence, we will keep clinging to people, things, and events to find some sense of belonging. Only when you come, when you really come, you touch us and set us ablaze with your love, which we will serve you with with our hearts. Finally, precious God, Father, Jesus, and Spirit, give your most special blessing tonight, blessing of love, joy, and thanksgiving to the wonderful leader of the Henry Nouwen Society, Karen Pascal. As you and we both know, she has so graciously given herself to deepen and expand Henry's legacy. Lord, we love her, we thank her, and we ask for your many generous gifts and blessings for her and for her future. Amen. I want to thank you all for coming tonight. I'm so glad you're here. I've seen so many familiar faces. Um, and don't you just love this space? I mean, it's amazing. It was built in 1961, and I tell anybody who's bringing guests to Toronto, this has to be on their tour, because this is the most beautiful chapel, I think, in Toronto. So it's a real pleasure to be here tonight. And um, I know that I think Henry would have been delighted that we're doing this here tonight as well. Uh, thank you, Sue. This was the home for the Sisters of St. Joseph, and uh, now it's the home for Tyndale University. This is the kind of spiritual center for Tyndale University and Seminary. Um, our purpose at the Henry Nouwen Society is, of course, to share uh, just what was essential to Henry, that, we were, that you understood that you were beloved. So tonight, I hope that will penetrate into you. There's some people here for whom you've come not knowing who Henry Nouwen is, and we're delighted you're here. And hopefully through the evening, you'll, you'll get a little taste of what we have to offer. But we're glad you're here no matter what. And I hope the evening will be something that fills you up and inspires you. I am delighted to welcome tonight, all the way from Winnipeg, my very good friend, Steve Bell. I know that you're in for a treat tonight. Steve is a singer, songwriter. Um, he is a... I've got it here on my list, all the different things. I mean, he's done so many things. He, he has, he's a, oh, the best part of it, Steve, he's a storyteller. Be prepared. That's, it's, he's a storyteller and a troubadour. This man has, in the last 30 years, produced, is it 21 albums now? 22. 22 albums. He's won all sorts of awards. Three Junos. You're in for a treat. This man has... Um, he has performed in over 2,000 concerts in 15 different countries to more than a half a million people, and he's with us tonight. So I want you to welcome him. We also have with us one of my very favorite musicians and composers, Mike Jansen. Together, when these two 
are in combination. It is absolutely magical and inspired. So please welcome Steve Bell and Mike Jansen. You're all, you're all so far away. Just come up here. It'd be nicer. Uh, Karen, thank you so much. It's just such an honor, and, and we love you so much, and, and to be invited to be part of honoring the beautiful work that you've done so beautifully is, is just wonderful. So thank you for that. And then, I mean, I would travel a very long way just to be in the same room with Sister Sue anytime. So this is um, already a very good night for me, and then to play with... One of Canada's finest, Mr. Mike Jansen. Give him a hand. There, be there. Ready? Three, four. Judge for yourself how great is the one who lives in God, whose God is love. An iron when left in embers bright Everything is fire Everything is light Oh love, most beautiful you are Oh flame of joy within my heart first light in me I was cold then like a stone when I saw your flickering oh what beauty is you drew near me I could scarcely speak some Judge for yourself if a fire isn't safe When cities fall before its face And yet a flower can endure the course of a storm By bowing to the tempest's rage Oh love, more fierce than all the rest Within my breast 
Thank you. Thank you. my shepherd He leads me with nothing to want And he leads me along with his staff and his rod He is here to comfort my fears Though I through the valley I walk with his hand in mine I thought I passed my last breath in the shadows of death but I'm still here safe on the other side he the shepherd of life <laughs> there's a table laid out before me there's a cup in which joy overflows surely goodness and love
gently restores He is the shepherd of life Mr. Mike Jansen. <laughs> okay, Karen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this one. I, 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 for some reason, I almost never do this song. I don't know why, really, but when I was thinking of what, what, you know, what would Karen like, um, I thought, I bet she would like this one. And the text is um, from uh, St. John of the Cross, the, that beautiful poem of the dark night, right, which is this gorgeous love story through the darkness and, and sort of trusting that, that even when the, the, the darkness is around, there's still a fire in the heart that keeps us moving towards our beloved, right? So it's a, just a great, it's such a great story. I, I don't know, I, I thought, when I thought of this night, I thought, this is a Karen song, so I hope I'm not wrong. <laughs> okay.
Conversion is a lifelong process. Conversion is claiming again and again and again the truth of myself. And what is the truth of myself? That I am God's beloved child. Long before I was born and my father and mother and my teachers and my church got involved. And I will be God's beloved child long after I've died. I go from, from God's intimate embrace until God's intimate embrace. God says, I've loved you with an everlasting love. I've loved you. Uh, before you were born, <laughs> I have, I've knitted you together in your mother's womb. I have molded you in the, in the depths of the world. I was there long before any human being was there. And I, I loved you and loved you and I have written your name in my hand. You're safe in the palm of my hand. Long before you were born. And I'm sending you into this world for a little time, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years. That's just a little bit. So that you have a chance to say, I love you too. See, that's what life is about. Life is simply saying yes to God's, to God saying, I love you. And you say, yes, I want to say yes to that. I want to say yes. I, I, and all the struggles and the pain and the anguish and the losses that take place in our lives are endless opportunities to claim God's love. I lose my mother and I'm in deep grief, but can I live that grief as a way to say yes to my lovedness, belovedness before I was born? You know, I lose a job. Can I somewhere live it, not to become bitter or angry or, or, or resentful or jealous, but can I somewhere claim that even though I lost my job, even though I'm not relevant, even though people pray, uh, praise me, even I'm not a big shot, that still I'm the beloved child of God. I can start living from that place. I, see, that's the spiritual life. Brian, remember that? Boy, those sweaters sure date us, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> the sweaters date us. But you know how that came about? Uh, Brian and I were producing a television program called Cross Currents. And I remember that I would ask people who I thought were inspiring. Who's inspiring you? Who are you reading? And we kept, that man's name kept coming up. Henry Nowen. I didn't know who he was at that point. Do you remember when we met him? I, it, it was fantastic. He was frenetic. <laughs> yeah, he was frenetic. We had to finally say, Henry, Please be quiet and sit down. <laughs> he was running the production crew. I remember that, you're oh. right. <laughs> he was uh, so genuine, of course. His ability, Karen, to speak to, to the heart of issues. Uh, I remember one time we were sitting in his office, uh, Sue, just next to your office, and uh, I'm, I come from an evangelical Protestant background, and he was, he, was, he was saying how good, some of the good things we were doing. But he said, you're just too active in being productive, and you aren't living the life of Christ. It was a shock to me. It was a two-by-four across the back of the head. <laughs> but he was so right, and his ability just to, just to just to simply go into the core issue and expose it. Uh, his language, both in talking and in, in his written form, is so simple, it's so accessible, uh, and it's so penetrating. It's interesting because I remember he took you to a picture on the wall, which was a wheel, and he basically said, you're so busy on the outside of the wheel, you need to go into the center yeah. where Jesus is. And he it, it, it just, it, it was fantastic. That day was interesting from my perspective. Um, I had met so many people that were inspired by Henry Nouwen, but he wasn't the least bit inspired by television. He was not onto television at all. Christian television in particular was really kind of a turnoff to him. He'd had enough negative experiences. 
So it took a long time to get that interview. We couldn't get him into a studio. I said, well, would you give us a day? We'll come, I'll bring a crew to, to L'Arche. And that's where he was living at the time. And he said, I'll give you three hours. Well, by that point, he was on such a pedestal for me that I basically said to our crew, you know, the only breaks you're getting, you're not getting any smoke breaks, you can go to the bathroom, but that's it. The cameras are rolling nonstop in those three hours. Um, it turned out that he really enjoyed the interview because of you, Brian, because he was talking to somebody who spiritually was asking deep questions and you had done your homework, you really prepared. You had read the books you were to read and you came in and it was a tremendous interview. It's interesting, uh, we were talking before tonight and you were saying uh, how that interview had affected you. I remember coming out of that interview and thinking I had blown it, that it, was, uh, that it was one of my poorer interviews. And so one never knows uh, how the spirit takes what you do. And that was the thing that, that uh, for me, Henry was so affirming of, and that's trusting the spirit to take the kind of the, the elementary things of your own gifts whether, whether, they, whether you seem to be excelling or, or not, and trusting the Spirit to take and utilize those gifts for, for His purposes. And that was, a, that was a reminder to me. It's interesting because I was um, speaking with Philip Yancey when he was here at Tyndale a, a few weeks ago. And Philip said, oh, I would have loved to have heard Henry just kind of in just in conversation with his, with somebody that was kind of of his spiritual weight. And I said, well, I've got to send you this interview with Brian, because although you didn't think it was very good, I know that Henry loved the interview and he allowed us to come back. And we ended up, it was funny because we came to do a half hour program. We ended up um, with two programs out of it. And then Henry died and it was, amazing because we ended up with some of the finest footage of Henry now and that became the documentary um, Journey of the Heart the life of Henry now and which I got to do and it was there's a whole miracle around how that came about but there's a miracle about being in this place Henry connected you in so many important ways tell us a bit about the story about how Tyndale and the sisters of St. Joseph came together well, we, we got to know Henry, we did the documentaries, and then uh, in 95, there was a Bible college behind here. It was on property that the Jesuits had built their school back, in, back years ago, and this Bible college had bought it, and in 95, it went bankrupt, and they asked me to come in to, put it to try and put it together, so I did. And of course, every day I'd drive by this place, and during that time, getting to know Henry, we had met Sue. And Sue and I had become friends. And periodically, we would get together for a breakfast or at Tim Horton's up there for prayer on a, in, in a morning. And one day, we were driving by, and my wife said to me, Honey, someday the Lord is going to give you this property. And I thought, you know, my wife, she's hallucinating. But <laughs> years later, we began to make connection. And... I didn't know that Sue was a member of the Sisters of St. Joseph. And so all of this begins to connect. And one day Sue looks at me and she said, are you telling, are you telling uh, the Sisters of St. Joseph what you really have in mind for the place? And I said, no. Well, she said, write a letter. So I wrote a letter and Sue said, that's not good enough. It's got a thump on the table. So I wrote another letter to the sisters. This became, but in the process, we wanted to change the name. And one day, Karen calls me. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. And she gave us the name of Tyndale. I was looking for a name for this Bible college. As we made the transfer, and with Sue's help, this became the university now of the old Bible college, which is now Tyndale. So you have... The, the circles move in and out of each other, and the Lord leads in his own way in his own time. 
Yeah, so there's an incredible connection between the Sisters of St. Joseph and Tyndale University. And yes, I have a plaque at home that says, I named this university. <laughs> <laughs> the only person who looks at it is me, but I, I have told so many people in this building, hey, you know, I named this place. <laughs> I really believed it was the right name for the place because Tony Tyndale had told me the wonderful story of Tyndale, the original story of Tyndale, and I went, well, that's what it's got to be. It's got to be that. But you know, the beautiful thing about it for us evangelical Protestants, Tyndale was always Catholic. He died Catholic. And so you know, we've yet, we named our school after a Catholic, which is beautiful in the, <laughs> in the, in the ways, in the, in the ways of, uh, of the Spirit, how he brings us together. So it's, it's a wonderful witness, I think, here in this community. Uh, as I got to know Sister Margaret, who was, who was Sister Superior of the Sisters, and as we became prayer partners... And as we talked about the future, we imagined this together. And I remember we had a picture taken, my favorite picture is taken of, of us taken there. Uh, and so it, it, it started with that introduction to Henry, and it just moved out beyond that. So to have this event here today, Karen, and the enormous work that you have done in making this society what it is and spreading the message of Jesus that Henry was, was all about, it's such a gift to us all, and we thank you. Ah, it's been my privilege. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think you'd enjoy seeing another little piece of this documentary. It's um, Henry telling the story of the return of the prodigal son, and then you're going to meet a very special partner and friend to us at the Henry Now and Society. Stacy Campbell's going to come and share a little bit about a partnership we have that I think is really, really exciting. Okay, let's have a look at uh, the Prodigals. One of Henry's most important works was inspired by Rembrandt's painting, The Return of the Prodigal Son. In this book, he summarized some of the major themes which ran through his own life and work. In a recent issue of Oprah Magazine, Hillary Clinton chose The Return of the Prodigal Son by Henry Nouwen as her favorite book. When I saw the poster of the Rembrandt painting in which the father embraces his returning son, I was totally overwhelmed. And when I saw this embrace, I said, that's where I want to be. And out of that, I started to think about myself as the, as the prodigal son that wanted to return home. But then I started to study the painting, and I went all the way to St. Petersburg to see the original painting of Rembrandt. The older son suddenly started to speak to me. That I'm the older son myself, you know, in my family. And there was a lot of resentment in me, a lot of, of, of not fully enjoying being in the church. And so I suddenly discovered I was these two sons both. And then uh, something incredibly important happened. I, I got very depressed and I had to take some time away. And one member of my community came to visit me and she said, Henry, you're talking about yourself being the younger son and you're talking about yourself being the older son, <laughs> but you have to be the father now. That's who you call to be, the father. And look at the father in the painting. You know, look, the father, the father has a hand of a mother and a hand of a father, as a male hand and a female hand, touching the son. Look at the father, who is like a mother with a big cloak, like the mother bird who holds his young safe. Look at the father who wants to welcome his son back without asking any questions. The father doesn't even want to hear the story of the younger son. The father doesn't even want to hear the story of the older son. He wants them to be back home on the same table with him uh, so that they can grow up and become like him. And I suddenly discovered my, my final vocation is, is to not only to go home, but to bring people home by saying, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. Just get out the, claw, the, the beautiful ring and get all the sandals and get all, let's, let's celebrate because you're back. Good evening. It's so exciting to be here uh, and to uh, and to share with you about this uh, this project. There are so many connecting points uh, for me uh, for me here. I first met um, Henry Nowen 
through Tyndale when I attended as a, uh, as a, as a student um, in the pages of The Wounded Healer. And, uh, and shortly thereafter, my bookcase became filled with uh, any of the accessible writings that I could get of Henry, and my office began to be decorated in little post-it notes of all the sayings that Henry had. And my favorite, of course, is the one that sits beside my bed, and I look at it every night before I tuck in for the evening, and it says, at the end of the day, your name is beloved. And so that was my, my introduction to, uh, to Henry, and, um, and my introduction to Karen, this, this fireball Karen who calls me up one day and says, uh, we have to meet, I, I've heard all about you and we have to meet, I hear you're a firecracker. And I thought, well, a firecracker and a fireball, what could go wrong? <laughs> So we had a conversation, and, and Karen told me this wonderful story about how Henry and Chuck Colson, and Chuck Colson, of course, is the founder of Prison Fellowship, and how Chuck and Henry were friends at Harvard, and Henry was, was a spiritual, uh, spiritual companion and a, a bit of a spiritual director to, uh, to Chuck, and it just felt like such a sacred moment that here that Karen and I got to be in um, as this continued on, and um, I'll share a couple of stories, and I'm, I'm going to come back to this with Karen, but um, I'll, I'm going to just share a couple of stories about how I have journeyed at Prison Fellowship through the last 15 years with the issue of fatherlessness. So a story that I inherited, and it's an, old, it's an older story, but um, happened in a prison, and there was an organization that decided one year on a Mother's Day that they were going to call in, find out the number of, of um, prisoners that were, were in the institution, and they were going to provide a Mother's Day card for every, um, every prisoner in the institution, and they did so. And so they were all laid out on the table, and the prisoners got to walk down one range at a time and collect their, uh, collect their cards. And at the end of the day, all the cards were gone. So they thought, fantastic. All the cards were sent out to mothers, mother figures, sisters, wh whomever it might be. So then on Father's Day, they said, let's repeat this. So on Father's Day, again, a card for every um, male, male prisoner in the institution. And at the end of the day, not one card was taken. What a powerful message about the connection of a father. And I'll share one more story with you that's a current story that happened with, um, with, our, with our staff during, uh, during my time at, uh, at Prison Fellowship. We decided that we were going to do a marathon, a, uh, a full weekend marathon in the prison. So we would go in Friday night, we'd have supper with the men, um, then we'd come back the next morning, have breakfast, we would pray with them, we would minister to them all day Saturday, all day Sunday, and then we would finally leave on Sunday night. So we did that, and you know, Henry has this really great way of being powerful with less. And I thought, what a great thing to do would be to take the Lord's Prayer, and let's just disseminate the Lord's Prayer. That will be our whole weekend. We won't walk in with books and books and books and, and all kinds of um, exercises that we're going to do. Let's just go and talk about the Lord's Prayer. And the entire weekend, we never got past the words, Our Father. So when Karen called and said, you know, maybe there'd be a partnership. I didn't have to pray about it. I didn't have to think about it. I didn't have to go and do some visionary exercise. I just said, Karen, I know what it is. The prodigal son, and we're going to talk about fatherlessness. So um, from there, Karen, and Karen, of course, is this fantastic creative visionary, and she was able to um, talk about the me a media project and, and adding to it with videos, which is excellent, and a number, of, uh, a number of details. So we spent a number of weeks together going back and forth until we finally formed um, the program, A Father to the Fatherless, uh, using uh, Henry's work, uh, The Prodigal Son. So now we have piloted in a few uh, churches, we've piloted at a couple of institutions, and then in the new year we plan to go into 50 prisons with, um, with Henry's book and with, the, uh, and with a workbook, an accompanying workbook, to heal, to, to provide conversation, and through Henry's work, how do we, how do we uh, facilitate the healing of the father wound? 
So, so Karen, fantastic. Um, it's been a great, uh, uh, a great journey so far, and I feel so privileged, although I'm coming at, it at the end as you're leaving, I feel so privileged that I've been able to, to work with you, and I know, that we're, uh, I know that we're not done yet. My name is Dennis Jacobs. I'm a lay pastor, and I run a prison ministry at my local prison. I've worked there for about 12 years in both the maximum and medium security sections. I've spent a lot of time in prisons, and some of my best friends are the men and women that I've met there. I just, I love their stories, I love their hearts, I love spending time with them. They teach me so much about my own life, my own relationships, and the many things that I am grateful for, the many things that I've taken for granted. I've seen amazing and miraculous transformations in prison. You know, the men I've met have done some crazy terrible, violent, even evil things. But I've also seen how they are transformed by the gospel of Jesus. So I can't stop going. I know what Jesus did for me. I was radically transformed in my 40s, believing my life was over and that I had nothing more to offer. And yet, here I am, a new creation. When I was born again, God put a radical, urgent calling in me, a calling to share this good news wherever I go to tell people about what Jesus had done for me and for my family. And that calling has led me to amazing places, to workplaces, to churches, to prisons. That calling led me here to talk about Henry Nouwen, to talk about Rembrandt, and ultimately to tell you about a man who saved me, who saved my family, who filled me with joy and hope. And his name is Jesus. I meet so many men and women who have been publicly humiliated. Even if our misfortunes are self-inflicted, they can still be overwhelming. Humiliation can be overwhelming. Have you ever been publicly humiliated? Where everything was just laid bare and exposed, those things that you thought you could keep hidden in the dark, but now everyone knows them. Have you ever lost everything and become poor and lonely? Even now as you sit here listening to these words, maybe right now, you are poor and lonely, ending up in a place where you can become convinced that there's no hope, that there's no escape, there's no freedom, and suicide becomes an option. That happened to me. You get to a place where you start saying, God, if this is my second chance, why here, why now, why like this? I would have listened to you, Lord. Why didn't you speak to me? But he was always speaking. God is always speaking to us because there is hope. When I began my work with the Henry Nouwen Society in May, Karen told me this wonderful story about how she had been dreaming for years to bring Henry Nouwen's books into prisons. Lots of red tape, bureaucracy, how does it happen? Two years ago, the Society got an email from Dennis Jacobs, who you just met on the video. Dennis is in South Africa. He'd been teaching Alpha in prisons for a number of years, and he just knew it was time for something else, but he wasn't sure what. Well, a volunteer, a wonderful Catholic nun, gave him a package. He told me he left it in his car for a few weeks and forgot about it. Then it sat on his coffee table for 10 days, unopened. All this time, he was asking God, what's the next thing do I bring into prison? He finally opened the envelope, and it was Henry Nouwen's The Return of the Prodigal Son. He devoured the book and knew immediately that that was what he was to bring into the prison where he was a volunteer chaplain. He wrote the Society a beautiful email, just overflowing with joy at the transformation they were seeing in the prisoners' lives. And that led to the phone call with Stacy. We had so hoped that Dennis would be here tonight. We bought him a plane ticket. His visa was denied. But you got just a taste of the video that, is, that he is hosting and, and helping to produce for what will be just a wonderful ministry, Father to the Fatherless, that we know is going to go around the world. Now let me draw your attention in your programs to the lyrics 
of an anthem called Fellowship of Miracles. Thomas Lloyd was a student at Yale Divinity School when Henry Nowen taught there. And he often was a music leader for Henry's liturgies. He composed this piece years ago in gratitude to those experiences with Henry. I'm so grateful to the Kingsway Lambton United Church Choir, directed by Nathan Gritter, who are here to sing this anthem for us tonight in a chapel that was the Sisters of St. Joseph, now home to Tyndale and Evangelical University with the United Church Choir. I'm sure that Henry's smiling as we bring the great diversity of friends, brothers, and sisters in the body of Christ.
Thank you so much. Yes, it couldn't be a lovelier place, too. Thank you so much. Just beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. All of you. Beautiful. Um, I wanted to share something. It's very personal, but it is actually, in a way, why this night was called to be fruitful, was the title. Um, I had quite a life-changing encounter about 50 years ago. I was at a point of real despair. Um, I was a young artist, I had some success with my work, I had a young family, but somehow there was this a profound sense of emptiness. And um, in the midst of that, I, I felt actually suicidal and I actually went and got a Bible. I, 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 first of all, I said, God, if you actually exist, you must know how awful I feel. You must know what's going on. And I also added a kind of PS to that. I said, if, if Jesus has anything to do with you, would you make it real to me? Because it has never been real to me before. And then I decided to give God one chance to speak to me. And I went to a Bible and I opened it and I put a finger on a verse and I said, this is your chance to talk back. <laughs> and he spoke so beautifully. He said, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. It was John 15, verse 16. It says, you did not choose me, but I chose you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. And that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. And when we thought about tonight, I just thought, God, you, you met me that night. And I have known the kindness of God. Henry Nouwen knew the kindness of God. That was what overflowed in his writing. And tonight, this is an evening for some of you, you've never heard of Henry Nouwen. And, and some of you... I have a little knowledge of him, but we're celebrating, supposedly we're celebrating my retirement and I wanted to sh share just what an incredible joy it's been for me to be part of the Henry Nowen Society. I actually kind of bumped into this job. You heard before that we created a documentary out of that interview that Brian and I did. It became a documentary that ended up playing on PBS and you heard Susan Sarandon's voice on it and that sort of thing. But it was interesting because I'd created the documentary and I, I created it with um, people who were Henry's family and his friends and his colleagues and his students. I sort of knew everybody that was part of the Henry Nowen gang. And when they formed a society, first it was in the States and then they formed one in Canada, they chose to include me just because, well, I kind of knew them all, even if I wasn't really Henry's best friend. And they were just a circle of people that were grieving and trying to process how can we take this pre precious message that we have out into the world. And so I somehow got to be part of that. But then something happened that was quite accidental. We hit we were about to have the 20th anniversary of Henry's death. We were going to do a conference at the University of Toronto. And we'd hired somebody to uh, take care of, direct the conference, put it together. And in the last minute, they couldn't take the job. And so they said, well, do you think maybe you could do it? And I thought, well, how hard could a conference be? You know, I could, I could probably do that. So I, I just thought I would volunteer to help out. I was on the board, but I... I took on the job of the executive director at that point, not envisioning that I'd be here for nine years. That, that was not part of the plan. I was a filmmaker and an artist, and yeah, but, but it was a wonderful, wonderful, joyful thing that happened to me. And I am ever so grateful. Um, and I can tell you that uh, I, I found myself at the beginning saying, well, do, do people still need Henry? It was 20 years out from his death. Do people still need Henry now? And does he still have something to offer? And I'm convinced that the world needs Henry's wisdom, his authenticity, and his vulnerability more than ever. If you've never read a Henry Nowen book, and I bet there's lots of you here that haven't, I will tell you that what you'll find there is something where you go, 
Oh, he's so honest. And what he's talking about is just like me. There's this great inner vulnerability. And he, he kind of points you to a God that loves you as you are. And it's quite wonderful. Our vision is that people all around the world would experience spiritual transformation by coming to know that they are God's beloved. All the programs and all the partnerships that the Henry Nouwen Society engages in work towards this end. I hope as you hear about the exciting things we're doing, you're going to want to come alongside of us and help put legs on our vision because tonight is really a night to tell you about some of the exciting things that are happening. Now, first of all, you heard from Stacy Campbell. And honestly, that was one of the best connections that happened. First, I got this lovely letter from this fellow that you saw on camera, the, the uh, Dennis Jacobs. And he was just overflowing, thanking us for this incredible gift that had been put in his hands and how powerful it was in the prisons where he was ministering in South Africa. So when I called up Stacy, I said, you know, has Henry ever influenced your life? And her response was ever so positive. She said, by coincidence, I just gave everybody on my staff this Christmas a Henry Nouwen book. So we knew we were on the same wavelength. But she knows so much about the whole issue of ministering in prisons. Yes, it was right. I couldn't get past the front door with our books. I was determined. I have loads of letters trying to get past the front doors to fill libraries and get them to chaplains, etc. But somehow it didn't happen. The timing wasn't right. But Dennis Jacobs' letter from South Africa started something in motion. And I want to say just a little bit about that program. I think it's going to be amazing, absolutely amazing. I've gotten to know how hard prison fellowship works, how careful they are with those workbooks to really make them meaningful and appropriate for their audience there. Dennis is going to... Have any of you seen the Alpha program? You know how the Alpha program has uh, Nikki Gumbel on... Um, on camera and then they sit around and they have discussion groups. I've been telling people this is a little bit like our Alpha program, only it's the, it's the Father to the Fatherless program based on Henry Nouwen's The Return of the Prodigal Son. And Dennis Jacobs is going to be our Nicky Gumbel <laughs> on camera. But the exciting thing is that Prison Fellowship, I think they're in 118 countries of the world pretty big mission field. And for example, as soon as we started putting on our website that this is where we were going, we heard from chaplains and from prison ministries all around the world wanting to have the materials. So this is just one of the really exciting programs that's right on our doorstep right now. We'd invite you to join us. Obviously, we want uh, all of you to get involved in supporting this work. Another thing that we do is we have daily meditations and they go out to 60,000 people all around the world every single day. They're written by Henry Nouwen. They're very life-giving. If by chance you haven't signed up for them, they're free, they're inspiring, and I can tell you here during the pandemic, they really touched people who were feeling such battles with anxiety and loneliness and depression, and Henry gets that. He's been there, so he speaks with wisdom out of that place. Well, one of the exciting aspects of what we're doing is we have decided to take this into Spanish. It's just the first language we're trying. We'll probably go to Korean and we'll go to Chinese and we'll go to French. But do you know 8% of the population of the world, their first language is Spanish? So that's something we've started and we're really excited about it. Um, hope you will want to help us with that. We're committed to uh, making the teachings of Henry Nouwen really accessible. And as such, one of the, we want them especially to go to a younger audience. Um, so in 2024, we'll be developing a Henry Nouwen meditation app that will reach right around the world. I think it's really a, an important opportunity. We hope you'll join with us in this opportunity to reach the next generation. We've been doing Henry Now and Now and Then podcasts. We've done over 120 of them, and we have uh, 
over a million listens to the Henry Now and, now and Then podcast. You know what's really exciting about it is, well, Henry's been dead for 30 years, almost, almost in 2026. It's 27 years right now. But what I would say, what's exciting is, I went out and said to people who are kind of the spiritual leaders today, I would go and say, well, has Henry Nowen had an impact on your life? And over and over again, you hear, yes, really been important in shaping my spiritual life. So in a sense, we're using this opportunity to speak with people who are writing and who are influencers, spiritual influencers and thinkers today. And introducing through them Henry Nowen to their audience and we're introducing our audience to them. They're really excellent people, yeah. Um, another thing we've got coming, this is, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a sense of what's on our horizon right now. Something really exciting, a book that Henry is so known for is called A Spirituality of Fundraising. You go, that's gonna put me to sleep. Not at all. When I walk into a room with a thousand Christian leaders, they all say, I know Henry now because of that book. Because it's a book that gave them the confidence to be able to go to people and ask them for money. And it was because Henry understood God's given you a, visit, a vision and you can share it with others. And it's so powerful. Well, we did a little... We did a little sample this fall. We, did a, we invited people to a spirituality of fundraising and uh, 2,000 people showed up. It was kind of fun. But right now, what's really exciting is we have planned a five-week seminar with some of the most outstanding teachers on fundraising and on donate, donating as well. It's not just for people who raise money, it's for people who give money. Really interesting combination. We're being sponsored by World Vision Canada, US and the UK, which is quite exciting. And already we have, um, I think several, maybe 150 signed up for this. It, but it's a very exciting seminar and we have some outstanding teachers from all sorts of really important organizations joining with us. So that's something, you know, if you have anything to do with that, like maybe you've got stuck with that job in your church and you have to go find funds for the church or whatever. Honestly, you're gonna wanna be at that seminar. It's really gonna be good. Another thing that we have over the years done and we are going to continue to do because it's so important is we do a project called Voices for Peace. And we have some wonderful partners on that project. And we are so grateful for that. But has there ever been a more important time to be speaking peace into the age we're living in? It's, it's a frightening time. And it's so important that we hear what Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. And how can we be part of bringing peace in the midst of the anguish that we see on our doorstep? We have one other kind of exciting project. For 25 years, we have wanted to do uh, an official biography of Henry Nouwen. Well, it's happening. It's a four-year project. Gabrielle Earnshaw is in the process of researching and writing the official biography of Henry Nouwen. It will be, it will be out in 2026 for the 30th anniversary. It's really a very wonderful and important and needed book. I really want to thank you for coming tonight. I want to thank you for being with us, for just, in a sense, being part of this celebration. For me, I am so grateful for each one of you that chose to come tonight. And I'm really grateful if you'll, in a sense, come away from this and go, I get what the Henry Nowen Society is doing, and I want to be somehow a part of that. Now, I'm going to welcome my very favorite musicians back to, on stage. We have Steve Bell and Mike Jansen. And take us home. This is great. Thank you for being here. Just got a couple songs for you. And uh, again, thanks. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here. Um, I had several songs in mind for right now, and I think, I think I'll pick this one. This is, um, 
The text is from John's um, gospel, and it's, it tells the story of the love that, uh, uh, between uh, Jesus and his father and how that translates to us. Um, so this is from the uh, high priestly prayer um, of John's gospel. Father, just before the hour comes That was set aside to glorify your Son With the glory from before the world began with the glory given to no other man Protect the ones you've given me to love I so desire that none of them be lost You've yet to understand the mystery Why the Son of God would wash another's feet but this is not the same It's a different thing All together This is not the same It's another thing All together Cause this is love prayer is not for only these alone but for those who follow after I'm gone may they understand the love you have for me as the kind of love that changes everything and they'll argue who will sit next to the throne and I cringe to hear them say, thy kingdom come. They think they know what they're getting into. But we both know that they haven't got a clue. Because this is not the same. It's a different thing all together. This is not the same, it's another thing, all together, but this is love, but this is love. coming to take the life no one has to look farther than me cause I am he some will trust in the things they think they know but they should think again and let Let me die Cause this is not the same It's a different thing All together oh, oh. This is not the same It's a better thing All together This is love. This is love. Thank you so much. In closing, this is um, this is the other song I knew immediately I wanted to do tonight, and, and I learned this um, 
It's, it's, uh, I learned this in a Jesuit novitiate up in the, the north of India in 1992. I traveled over there and, and uh, sang at a retreat, and these young um, uh, novices taught me this song. Um, at, the, at the end of every day, they'd gather, and they had, uh, had a, a, a lovely schedule. They'd get up every morning, they'd have their breakfast, and then they'd do uh, work uh, till noon in the gardens and all those kinds of stuff. And during that time, from 9 to noon, they were expected, because they had already memorized the psalms, they were expected to recite all 150 psalms as they did their morning chores. And then they went out for works of service in the afternoon, they came back for supper, then there was study in the evening, and then there was chapel at night. And at the end of every night, um, they'd gather together and they'd sing deep calls to deep. And my soul finds no resting place but him. He is my God and the yearning of my heart his touch can still. In each rare moment I felt his presence, I will remember and forever cherish. Gorgeous, every night, it's my favorite part of the day. <laughs> so I'll close with this. I shall remember 
and forever cherish. And each rare moment I felt his presence, I shall remember and forever cherish. Thank you, Mike Jensen. <laughs> it's an honor. Thank you so much. God bless you. <laughs> wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the richness of this night. All of you have contributed so much and we are so grateful. I want to first of all say tonight was to be in a way uh, a retirement celebration for me, but of course you can't have something like this without giving credit where credit is due. And I've had the most incredible staff. I've had wonderful people that I work with, very, very talented, who have helped create so many things. We started with a woman named Maureen Wright, who had been with us for 16 years and was kind of the core of the organization. And I honestly, when I lost Maureen, I thought, I've got to leave. But then we had wonderful Will Finley. And then we, yeah, yes, some of you know Will Finley, and there's a cheer because he's, a, he's so special. There have been so many. Chris Wilson, Remy Tuck, uh, I'm going to forget names. Uh, Alexa Hawley, Blaise Pascal, Gary Vaughn, Stephen Lazarus, Wendy Vanderwall Martin has joined us. And there was one person who was quite exceptional. Sally Keith Cohen came as our literary manager, and she is one of the best literary managers in Canada. Uh, she manages the estate of uh, that Anne of Green Gables girl. Uh, but she has done such a wonderful job with us, and she's actually retiring as well. So um, we tonight are announcing that the new literary manager for the Henry Nowen Legacy Trust is Stephen Lazarus, and he's with us tonight. <laughs> and he's, he's a real gift. I also want to thank our boards. We've had wonderful volunteer boards from Canada and the United States. I didn't take time to explain the fact that we are actually three organizations, Henry Nowen Society US, Henry Nowen Society Canada, and the Henry Nowen Legacy Trust. But all of these wonderful people, these volunteer members of our board have been fantastic in terms of their gifts that they've brought and their expertise. But I want to especially thank and honor the people that have stood as our chairs. People like Hugh Martin, Dr. Sean Mulrooney, David Parkinson, and now Reverend Daniel Cho. It's a big job and it's a job of leadership and one that has meant so much to the Henry Nowen Society. In the coming weeks, 
I know you're going to hear that there is a new executive director. It just hasn't been named yet, but you'll get the announcement. And I'm committed to do everything I can to help in that transition so that person can succeed and go forward. Because as you can hear, we have vision. God is opening big doors for us right now, and we are so excited about that. And we would really encourage you to partner with us. I want to also tonight, we want to give you a gift as you leave. When you go out, there's some free booklets you can have. There's especially for Advent, help yourself. We've got a few books on caregiving, which you're welcome to help, help yourself and have some of those too. And you're going to get fruit. You're going to get a fruit that will remind you about the theme of tonight. That this is uh, a night in which we wanted to talk about our call to be fruitful. And by the grace of God, we're allowed to be fruitful. So I wish you all well. I thank you for coming. Safe trip home. And thank you for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you all.